All right, here it is, the graphical user interface to generate this isomorphic keyboard piano overlay that's 3D printable. It's got a whole lot of parameters over here and they all affect things and a lot of it's broken because I'm not a good programmer. I'm a terrible programmer. I uh, hired someone on Upwork to even make the GUI because I just have no clue about that stuff. And this is basically what I was able to sort of hack together to get what I needed done done. So anyway, over here, you're going to enter some measurements from your keyboard, as long as with a couple desired measurements, like the key top height difference is the difference in height between the frontmost and furthest back key top. So if I set this to zero, they're all flat. If I set it to 30, there's a big difference, and I'll set it back to 15. The round radius is the rod that runs through the back of them. Uh, gaps and tolerances, the, the stock fit for X and Y is just how much smaller this stock is than the hole in the bottom side of the key top here. You got key top scale. So you just scale down the key tops um, because if they fully tessellated this area, they'd rub up against each other when they get depressed because the, the key travel isn't straight down. It's on the you know an arc. So this side would end up rubbing against this side if they were actually like right next to each other. Under key gap, that's the another tolerance thing for the space in between each key here. Uh, all right, so now the fun stuff, isomorphic settings. It's not necessarily super intuitive, but I'll do my best to explain it. You can choose your half steps to the period. And by half steps here, we do actually mean like single steps, as in like underlying piano key half steps to the period. And the period is where the scale starts over. So usually the octave, but not necessarily. Like if you, you could make a bowl and pierce overlay, and then it would be... 13 steps to the period and the period would just be the trident of the three to one. And then you set the half steps to generator here. When we've got 12 to the period and seven to the generator, that gives us stacked fifths type thing. In addition to being able to decide, you know, what the generator is of the scales you're using, you can choose which large step is the one that's actually connected by the keys. And I found that Having the half steps to large and one step B1 is almost always the best for like a piano style playing because it leads to the, the tallest, skinniest key tops so that you can kind of reach it with your finger. You know, at the, at the it can find the correct left to right position and then, you know, it'll have the most space vertically to be on the right key. But you can do other stuff. So if you say half steps to large is two, three... Oh, that's right. And I think this is a bug that I still need to sort out because even vertical flip won't fix it, will it? No, that's because I changed something in the code and I'm dumb. So ignore that one. Poop. Someone help me. I need coders. That's half of what this is. It's like, hey, look what I did, but also like help. And then the gamut is like the number of actual key tops per octave. Because you notice each key has two key tops, but you know, you could set it to like, just, I only need, you know, 19. I don't need to have access to E sharp on my overlay or whatever. And then it'll make something like this. And it just kind of stretches everything out. And some of the keys will have two and some will have one. But it's, you know, always a continuous chain of fifths. And you can even go all the way down to 12. And then, yeah, you just get one for each key. But, of course, then you kind of lose the isomorphic benefit of this because you can't keep going in any of the directions that you might want to keep going if you want the fingerings to stay the same. But uh, it's an option. There it is. So another thing you can do is shift weather the hexagons are flat up or pointy up, in which case it would mean flat sides, but that's how I phrased it in the program because that's how I thought of it. I'm very sorry. There we go. And what you can do with this slider is actually, it's a, it's a hard to, to explain, so I'm just going to drop the value and hit generate and see if you see what I mean. So the, these sides got smaller. Whereas if I go bigger, they're getting taller and taller. And actually, this is another bug. If I get too close to... Uh, one here, yeah, I, I lose the the rounding on the bottom edge because <laughs> because I'm not good at coding. And if you can help, please help me. So this is flat up, and then you know you've got almost nothing over here. You end up with not hexagons, just the squares, pretty much. And if you do a lot of it, you actually end up uh, more and more rectangular shapes. And if I uh, were a good coder, when this hits one, they would just be squares. But instead, I, uh, uh, oops, sorry, don't, don't set it to one. <laughs> don't do that. This does let you save presets for the values in the text boxes. You will give it a render path. And then if you want to also render the STLs, this program will do it for you. But then you have to browse to where your OpenSCAD installation is. Element OpenSCAD. Yeah. 
There it is. And then you can click render STL files. And it'll do it all for you. Right, and it's also worth pointing out, so the, the, the render to path, you can keep rendering to that spot and uh, it will just keep overriding the together file, which is what I have open here, which is why I'm able to show you sort of the changes in semi real time. Like obviously it's not reacting to the slider, but I can, you know, change things here, hit generate and at least see it pretty quickly. Whereas when you tell it to render the SDL files, that takes forever. So don't do that until you're sure you've got what you want. But now let's 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 talk about how this can be generalized to some crazy microtonal stuff. So like instead of half steps to period 12, let's do 11. And then half steps to generator, let's do two. And a uh, gamut of 22, range of 11. Let's see what it is, let's see if everything works out okay. Yeah, there it is. All right, so here's your 11 tone equal temperament layout. Gives you the machine scale if you're in that mapping, blah, 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 blah. What, what if the generator is one out of 11, you know? There it is. <laughs> and then it starts over. And if it's three out of 11, I don't even know what three out of 11 is temperament wise. Oh, well, it's probably Hansen. Yeah, it's like the edge of Hansen. Of course, it does let you decide which steps are connected. There's that. You can do the same thing with the pointing up versus pointing down hexagons, as long as you don't break the bottom edge. There we go. So not broken. Oh yeah, lots lots of possibilities. And that's and this is just the eleven tone scales. Those are the thirteen tone scales. Let's do some father. You know, all right, father. Tall skinny keys. There it is. Of course, if you wanted to go crazy, you could. Now you're limited by the uh, fact that the underlying keyboard has its spacing built in, so you can't like condense the notes enough to make a ton of notes fit in a small area. But as long as you're willing to deal with, you know, really huge octave widths, you can say half steps to period 31, half steps to generator was 18, uh, range 31, let's just say 62, just so we can see. Bang, there we go. All right, so now this, it's not, the frames aren't going to be great, but here is one octave of 31 Edo with 62 notes per octave. Oh, and starting key, I think it's just like, oops, what I do? Half steps the generator 18, oh yeah. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, I don't, it's not like I have a bunch of checks in this. So like, it'll take garbage information and just do whatever I told it to do. And a lot of times it's just <laughs> a garbage result. So if you see a garbage result, you know, there's, I would say there's like a 50% chance you put garbage in and another 50% chance that the code is garbage and you did everything right. So, uh, good luck. No, really, though, I would, I would love to see people mess with this, report any bugs to me that you notice. Even better would be if someone wants to help take a look at this, because like I said, I'm <laughs> I'm no programmer. As far as the isomorphic keyboard overlay stuff goes in general, I'm not sure having the separate key tops is really the way to go, at least for overlays or for piano type playing, because even though I've managed to get the taller and skinnier key tops, I still find that I can't like sort of reach into the keys and find any note that I want at any time. It's still kind of awkward. So I'm thinking maybe a purely one dimensional interface is going to be better off with like a two dimensional graphic or, you know, not necessarily graphic, but some sort of two dimensional visual guide through the notes that maybe as far as your fingers are concerned are just going to be one dimensional. I don't really know where it's going to go next. And so that's why I'm issuing this release here. Well, I said a lot. I hope it was intelligible.